This is lesson number four in a crash course in movable guitar chords. It's completely free, and you can download the free first movable guitar chords booklet from my website. I'll leave a link for that in the description. So far, you've learned how to play movable major and minor chord shapes with roots on the fifth and sixth strings. Now we're on page five, and we're going to learn how to play two movable dominant seven chord shapes with roots on the fifth and sixth strings. Remember, this is just a crash course. To really get these chords under your fingers, you need to play them as often as possible. One really good way to do that is to play songs you already know, but play them with movable chord shapes, even when you could play them as open chords. At the top of page five, we have two movable dominant seven chord shapes, one with the root on the fifth string, one with the root on the sixth string. Let's take a look at the sixth string shape first. This is finger one, two, four, and three. And I'm muting strings one and five. So I'm muting string one around the base of my knuckle, my first finger. And I'm also using kind of the pad of my first finger to mute the fifth string. There is another way to play this shape. It's a fuller way. You're just barring, you're fi playing finger one, three, one again two, one, and one. These are both valid ways to play this dominant seven chord. I like to play this particular shape with the individual fingers. It's a little harder to learn and a little harder to grab at first, but you're not barring. And if, if I can uh, get away with not barring, I will do that. But you can play this however you want. Here's our uh, chord with the root on the fifth string. This is shaped just like a C7, so you probably already know C7. The difference is we are muting strings one, and well, you shouldn't be playing string six when you play a C7 chord, but we are muting strings one and six. So if you do that, you have no open strings, and it becomes a movable chord shape. You definitely want to mute that first string, and I'm just doing it with kind of the pad of my first finger. I'm flattening it out a little bit because if you don't mute it, you're gonna get some really nasty chords in there. Now, the root is being played by my third finger in this case. It doesn't matter what finger you're playing with, it just depends on the shape. You're just paying attention to whatever note is being played on the fifth or sixth string, depending on what shape you're playing. This is the fifth string shape. Our third finger is on the fifth string, so that's where our root note is. Right below those dominant seven chords on page five, we have this chord finder exercise. This works just like the chord finder exercise you did on page three for majors and four for your minor chords. We have D7 on the fifth string. So that means first we need to find our root on the fifth string, the D. That's gonna be at the fifth fret. And we're going to use our fifth string dominant seven shape, which means our third finger is going to be playing that note for the root. Make sure again you're muting the first string. Next we have an A7. First you need, to, you need to find your root note. That's going to be your A at the sixth string. That's going to be at the fifth fret. And then we use our sixth string dominant seven shape to play an A7. Next we have an F7 on the fifth string. So find your root note, the F on the fifth string. That's going to be at the eighth fret and play that fifth string dominant seven shape. Next we have a C7 on the sixth string. Find your root note first. That's going to be the C on string six, fret eight, and then play the sixth string dominant seven shape. And then we have a C7 on the fifth string. That's gonna be finding your root note first on the fifth string. That's gonna be at the third fret. And this will just basically be the C7 you probably already know, but still be in the habit of muting your first string. Next, we have a B flat seven on, si on the sixth string. First, find your root note, the B flat on string six. That's gonna be at fret six. And you play your sixth string dominant seven shape for a B flat seven. Next, we have an E flat seven on the fifth string. Find your E flat on the fifth string. That's going to be at the sixth fret. 
and then you play that fifth string dominant seven shape. And now we have an E7 on the fifth string. So if your E flat seven was here, your E7 is just going to be one fret higher. Then we have an F sharp seven on the fifth string. First find your root note, the F sharp on the fifth string. That's just gonna be two frets higher than your E. That's gonna be at the ninth fret. And you play your fifth string, a dominant seven shape for an F sharp seven. And finally, we have a G seven on the sixth string. You find your root note first, that'll be the G on string six, fret three, and you play your sixth string dominant seven shape. At the bottom of page five, we have this B flat blues. What we're gonna do is play our B flat seven chords with the root on the sixth string, and our E flat seven and our F seven chords with our root on the fifth string. And we're gonna go through the same process we did on the previous pages. Find the root notes first, figure out what chord shapes you're gonna play with them, and then play the exercise. Our first chord is a B flat seven. Remember, we're gonna play our B flat seven chords with the root on the sixth string. So you need to find your B flat on the sixth string. That's going to be at the sixth fret. So that'll be that sixth string dominant seven shape for a B flat seven. In measure two, we have an E flat seven. We're gonna play our E flat seven in this song with the root on the fifth string. So you find your E flat on the fifth string. That's going to be at the sixth fret. Same fret as your B flat, just on the other string. And we play our fifth string dominant seven. Making sure you're placing your third finger on that root and you're muting the first string. We have one other chord in this exercise. There's an F7 in the third measure of line two. So for that, we're going to play on our fifth string and that's going to be two frets higher than your E flat. That's going to be the eighth fret. That'll be with the same shape. So here's your B flat seven, E flat seven, and then just slide two frets higher for your F seven. And before you do this exercise, I would recommend just cycling through those chords, getting used to that movement. And then you play the exercise, use whatever pattern you like. I'm just gonna play some basic quarter notes, I think. Doesn't matter what pattern you're playing, the main thing is you're learning how to find these chords. B flat seven to E flat seven to B flat seven to E flat seven to B flat seven F seven E flat seven and B flat seven. At the very bottom of page five, we have this D blues. We're going to play our D seven chords with the roots on the fifth string and our G seven and our A seven chords with our root notes on the sixth string. And again, we're gonna find our root notes first, figure out what chords go with them and then play the exercise. First chord is a D7. Remember, we're going to play this with a root on the fifth string. You need to find your root note on the fifth string, the D, that'll be at the fifth fret. And that'll be with our fifth string shape. So you put your third finger on that root. Our G7 is going to be with the root on string six. We have a G right there on the, at the sixth string, third fret, and that'll be with the sixth string dominant seven shape. And later on, we have an A7, again with the root on the sixth string. That's just gonna be two frets higher than your G. And that'll be with that same shape. So moving from A7 to G7 and back and forth, same shape, different frets. And I would recommend first just playing through those chords, D7, G7, A7 a few times. Get used to that motion. Play this as slowly as you need to, and then play the exercise as slowly as you need to. So we have D7 to G7 to D7. To G7 to D7. 
seven to A seven G seven to D seven. Your assignment is to practice the material on page five and to continue memorizing notes on strings five and six as needed. I've got a couple videos that'll help you learn the fretboard. I'll leave links for those in the description. Also in the description, you'll find a link to the free PDF of the first movable guitar chords booklet. Once you're comfortable with page five, I'll see you on page six. We're gonna start combining movable major, minor, and dominant seven chord shapes all in the same songs. Mm -hmm. 